and people spend years and years and years doing the same stuff over and over and over again and just keep stuck. Hello everyone, it's your girl Jada Christine and I'm back with another video. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel where I upload faith and lifestyle content. If this is your first time here, please subscribe. And if you've been here and you ain't subscribed, what we doing? What we on? I have an amazing announcement. I wrote a book and it is now available for pre-order as the time that you're watching this video. And this feels so surreal. I wrote this book summer 2022 and it's finally being published. I could not wait any longer. There was a whole lot of fear in the process of writing this book. There's a whole lot of fear in the process of publishing this book and it was holding your girl back for real. I started writing this book in prompting of the Holy Spirit. This particular summer I was not doing anything. I was at my sister Brittany's house. Shout out to her. She actually drew this this drawing you guys see in the middle I'll, I'll put a picture on the screen she drew this drawing i like put it in the cover art it was perfect i was at her house this particular summer watching my niece and i was not outside as i would have liked to spend my summer and the holy spirit prompted me to start writing and it was very much healing even though this happened i wrote it uh, about a year and a half after i gave my life to christ there was still some healing that took place in the process of writing it and in being vulnerable that is what happens and in being vulnerable other people get set free too which is a beautiful thing it is called me versus me finding freedom from self-sabotage self-defeat self-inflicted strongholds and self-destruction through christ very long subtitle i know but we really be putting ourselves in some bondage sometimes and that is my whole point of this book you know, the battle between the flesh and the spirit, we're all constantly facing this battle on a daily basis, fighting these two forces that are within us, knowing that they lead us to our destiny in this life and the life after it, knowing that whatever choices we make on a daily basis creates the life that we live here on this earth and creates the life that we live after we die. I'm just going to go ahead and read what's on the book flaps for y'all. One thing I wanted to make clear is that this is not a self-help book. I don't believe in self-help. I don't believe that we have the power or the ability to help ourselves. I believe that we have the power of God within us to help ourselves, but it's not about us. And that's one of the biggest issues I see in this day. The word says that in the end times, people would be lover, lovers of selves. And everywhere you look, people are obsessed with themselves and their lives and what they're doing. And that's not healthy for society. It's not healthy for us even. We can't help ourselves. This book is about being set free from thinking that we can help ourselves. If we look at our lives and the choices we made and we're not where we want to be, maybe it's time that we stop relying on ourselves to get there. I start with this question on the flap, which says, do you ever feel like you have an angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other whispering in your ear in the face of hard decisions? Which one do you often choose to listen to? And where have those choices brought you? We've all made some regretful choices in our lives that have left us with heavy consequences. Some of those consequences seem to repeat themselves and we can't seem to figure out why or how to escape those perpetuating cycles. With timeless biblical wisdom and vulnerable stories from my college experience, I'm here to equip you to become self-aware of your decision-making process, surrendered from your own way, submitted to God and his wisdom, set free, and set free from all self-sabotage, self-defeat, self-inflicted strongholds, and self-destruction. After I realized I couldn't help myself and that I was the very one making things worse in my life with my choices, I saw that the answer was in Christ. I surrendered it all to God and received true liberating freedom, never looking back. Whew. This is scary, honestly. <laughs> and then on the back, some of us are handcuffed to our bad decisions, fears, addictions, or to complacency, and we struggle to find freedom from the sabotage that we inflict on ourselves. Or maybe we don't even desire freedom because we become comfortable in it all. That used to be me. I had many vices, including smoking weed, temporary situationships, new age spirituality, and more that left me overcome by anxiety, depression, and many other emotional wounds. However, nothing I did freed me from my own cycles of self-destruction. God had to intervene. Jesus already did his part when he was crucified on his cross. Now it's our turn to pick up our crosses on a daily basis and do the same. It's just you 
versus you. This book is a call to action, okay? I see so many people, anybody can see it actually. I can't even say I see. If you have spiritual eyes and you can look at this world, not just looking at the physical reality, but you can see every, you can see right through everybody. Look, man, if you look into yourself, if you look into the word of God, and you open up your spiritual eyes and you can see things inside yourself, you'll start to see stuff in everybody. And I see every day people dealing with the same stuff that I used to deal with, the same anxiety, the same depression, the same wounds and cycles that we can't get out of, the same generational curses and traumas and stuff that we just are walking around in bondage to, not realizing that the key is free and it's right in front of our faces. And I want as many people as possible to become aware of the fact that they don't have to keep living their life that way. We always feel so helpless when we're in these cycles, when we're dealing with bondage, when we're feeling stuck to something, like can't get away from something or someone that is keeping us down. We don't believe that we can have that healthy love, so we keep going back to this toxic relationship. We don't believe that we can have the dream job we want, so we refuse to quit our job and take risks we 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 live fearfully and that's not the way that god wants us to live there's so much more that he wants for us and people spend years and years and years doing the same stuff over and over and over again and just keeps them stuck and i know some of you who are watching this video are tired of that and for me it didn't take long i <laughs> i lived i grew up in church but i didn't really know god once i went to college i started wilding out I knew about one semester in, okay, this is not the life I want to live. God, I'm sorry. Let me get right with you, okay? Because there's some things I want to do in my life that I know that I cannot take myself to if I keep making these choices. If I keep not believing that I can have healthy love and keep going to the dusty niggas. If I keep smoking weed when I'm feeling anxious or when I'm bored, it's keeping me lazy. It's keeping me anxious. It's keeping me in bondage to that thing that's draining my pockets. I can't keep partying every weekend when there's stuff that I need to be creating at home, when there's stuff I need to be building in my own life, and I have, I'm have i failing classes. That's where I was. That's what I was doing. I cannot keep waking up every morning and every evening going to pornography, escaping whatever through lust. There's no power in it. It, it warps my mind. I was tired, y'all, and I'm very vulnerable in this book. This is a judgment-free zone. This world is crazy. I don't blame anybody. As soon as we come out of the womb, we're not in a heavenly place. As naive as we are, we're immediately hit with hate. People come out, babies come out the womb and people start calling them ugly on day one. That's just crazy. But that's not what I'm saying. Some people are born into toxic homes and we're helpless beings. And so we get older, we get older and these things carry with us. We may not think it, we may think, oh, we're, we're good, we're straight, but there's trauma that needs to be healed. There, there's things that need to be unlearned there's things that need to be learned and it's a process and there's some healing that needs to take place and it can all be found in christ that's what this book is here for that's what the bible is here for i just wrote this for anybody who could relate to any anything in my story who dealt with anything that i dealt with who needed a relatable ear who needed to see a black woman write a christian book who needed to see a young woman write a christian book that actually has some some wisdom and some power in it so before I end this video, I want to read you guys a little bit of it. There are two parts in this book, eight chapters and a prologue. Fun fact, the prologue title was initially the, the book title. The, the prologue is called Me Vs. Her. The book is now called Me Vs. Me because I wanted the dudes to know, okay, you can read this book too. It's not just for other ladies. My husband told me to do that because he was reading. He was like, you know what? Don't just put Me Vs. Her because some dudes need to read this too. Part one is called Serving the Flesh. There's four chapters, The Veil, The Serpent, Abandonment, and Void. And part two is called Serving God. Chapter five is Death, Six, Rebirth, The Lifted Veil, and then Freedom. I'm going to read the prologue. Let's see how much I'm going to include in this. So I start off with Proverbs, for Proverbs 1, 29-32. I get straight to it, honestly. <laughs> People like to leave the verses out of the book, verses out of the Bible that actually have some conviction to them, but nah, I got straight to it. For they hated knowledge and chose not to fear the Lord. They rejected my advice and paid no attention when I corrected them. Therefore, they must eat the bitter fruit of living their own way, choking on their own schemes. For simpletons turn away from me to death. Fools are destroyed by their own complacency. I don't want you to eat the bitter fruit of living your own way. I tried it once and it was sickening. From the moment we leave the wombs of our mothers, the world blasts our ears with messages like, follow your heart, chase your dreams, 
Walk in your truth. Believe in whatever makes you happy. Do what you know is good for you, and you are perfect the way you are. Don't change. The central focus of all of this is self. Self-guidance and self-service, which ultimately leads to self-centeredness and selfishness. Although it may not sound that way at first, it can be deceivingly inspiring, cause causing us to blindly follow it, hoping it will lead us to our destiny. I, too, fell into this trap. I listened to her, the voice inside of me. I followed my gut feelings, the desires in my heart, and the distorted truth that she created that seemed to work for her in her own world. Little did I realize that by feeding her power, she would later use it against me and take control of my spirit. Suddenly, there was no I and no me. She completely dominated me, and I became enslaved to my own flesh. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. It seems as if our flesh is against us. Is free will a trap? Why would someone choose to go to hell? Why are we tormented by this ongoing battle between the flesh and the spirit throughout life, knowing that the victor determine, determines our fate? Some people may think that God sends people to hell, but in truth, it is we who decide through our actions where we will end up. God sent his son... I'm going to leave that for the book, actually. I'm going to leave that for y'all to read. Let me not give too much, okay? Ah! So, yeah. If you have a book that you just written and you're interested in knowing how the publishing process works or how to get your book out there, I'd be happy to create a video or a series explaining how I made this book because there was a lot of research I had to do in order to get this on and popping. It took a long time. When it came to creating the cover art, I did everything by myself, y'all. The only thing I didn't do was the editing. I went on Fiverr and had a freelance editor write, uh, edit it for me. But the cover art, y'all, I did the cover art. I did the self-publishing. I even made the dang on copyright page. <laughs> the formatting in the book. Everything from start to finish. Me and God did that together. We was teammates. So... If y'all want to know how I did that, I'd be happy to make a separate video on that. I wanted to keep this very brief so that y'all be excited to go get this. It is available on Amazon. It will be available on online in Target, Barnes & Nobles, and Walmart. I forgot the other ones, but I self-published it through Ingram Spark, which is like a mass distributing, the main like distributor thing. So right now I know for sure it's available on Amazon for pre-order. I'm not sure though uh, when it will get up on the other ones. Also, I don't know why it takes so long for the stuff to like upload and stuff, but the picture, it, it still says no image available. And that kind of makes me a little bit sad and embarrassed, but it's okay. It's $19.99. It will be released on November 5th. Right now you can pre-order it. And so if you want to get one, go get you one. You should get one. God bless you if you do get one. But that is all I have for y'all today. I just wanted to share this news with you guys and... Um, invite you to go formally invite you to go pre-order it if you enjoy this video please like comment and subscribe please let me know if you get this book what you think about it I really want to know I really want to know what you guys think about it and if it had if it held any power in your own life God bless you have an amazing day I love you God loves you and go get you one of these they got that on Amazon yup all right bye y'all